the pit. And uh, Terry just came off of the track. Uh, how's it feel out there? Feels pretty good. We're uh, trying to improve a little bit to qualify. We're a little bit off from Emmy. But uh, we uh, changed our pipe a little bit, did a little adjusting on our quads. Uh, we should be there for the race. We're better racers than we are qualifiers anyway. Okay, Bob, uh, the track announcer over here tells us that uh, you picked up last year's championship in the PKA series. Yeah, we won it uh, with a close uh, point battle with Ron Emick. I won it out at uh, Las Vegas. We were, I was uh, five points behind going into the final race, and I won the race at Las Vegas, and he finished seventh, and that allowed me to win the overall championship. Got to keep you guys really hopping to try and uh, track all over the United States to run these things. How many of these races do you actually run? A year. The last two years have been four races each series, so uh, maybe eventually we'll end up with more races than that. But right now, that's all that most of the guys can afford until our purses get bigger. Right, and uh, I would imagine that uh, when you get some more sponsorship, sponsors involved, uh, the purses go up, more people get involved. Somewhere. Yeah, we're hoping that uh, this will lead into bigger and better things, trying to accumulate the best people, best drivers in karting, and go out and, and race and see who truly is the best in karting. Okay, we're standing here in the uh, Kurt Burris pits, and uh, Kurt has been one of the founders, one of the uh, original members of this professional kart racing association, right? Yeah, we've been involved in it for a few years now. And it looks like you got your crew pretty busy here. Uh, who are you going to be chasing out there today, do you think? Ronnie Emmett's been an awful good, and Terry Trader, and Ron Reddy running really fast, too. Okay. Uh, I noticed that uh, you people are in the tire business, so uh, are you really out here to, uh, this weekend to uh, test tires or to race these guys? So this is a racing venture today, right? Yeah, we're out here to race. It's, you know, all the testing's done back home. And other tracks and all this is this is all for racing right here. Well, we've been going through the pits here and we run on to Ron Redding and uh, Ron being one of the local guys here. Uh, how do you think you're going to do against these uh, invading pro drivers here today? Well, I think uh, I've run against them quite a few times before, and I think Ronnie Emick from California is running real fast, and I don't think anybody's going to pass him. Uh, I hope to be second or third. I'm uh, real happy with the way the car is running. Uh, motors are running real well. If I have some good luck and uh, doesn't get too hot, I'll be happy. Do you think, you think it's going to be a race for second? I think it is, unless Ron breaks. He is uh, really got himself together, and uh, right from the time they came here, they were really ready to go. And I'm real satisfied to be running as fast as I'm running, because I'm running faster than I ever ran before. So to me, that's kind of a personal best. I'd like to win. I'll give it everything I got. Well, listen, uh, Rod, it's been real fun talking, Ron. It's been real fun talking with you. And uh, being one of the organizers, uh, kind of playing host here at uh, Genesee Valley, plus racing, I don't know how you find all the time. Well, I'll be glad when the week is over, I can tell you that. Yeah. Well, listen, from here on out, we just want you to concentrate on that track out there. All right, well, thank you very much. Okay. okay, standing here with Wayne Westerly? Westerly. Westerly. Okay. Uh, as Wayne just pointed out, the Coyote Carts, and uh, they've been real hot here on the East Coast, uh, from what we've been able to see. see. And uh, how are they doing across the country, Ron? Uh, right. Well, not too bad. Last year we had probably our best year. We had seven WK national titles and about uh, eight uh, point series wins in the WK uh, territory. Uh, we're real strong here on the East Coast, primarily up through Mississippi. Uh, yeah, well, listen, Wayne, uh, we're going to have to shove off and want to try and find uh, run up some of these uh, other racers and get a word with them. But uh, we'll be watching those coyotes out there today. Thanks, John. Bye -bye. Okay, we're standing here now with Linda Emmy and uh, Linda Schwartz, uh, Gary White. Right. And uh, Ron Emick is your son. Right, he's 22. Okay, the uh, racing Emmicks are from California, Sacramento. Yep, that's right. And uh, these people have been in this sport a long, a long time. Uh, we won't tell you how long because we'll be giving you away a little bit there. No, so he started when Ronnie was still in the cradle. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Uh, here at Avon this time, this is a new track for you, uh, a new track for PKA. Uh, we've talked to some of the other drivers, and they say that they're all running for second, that Ron's going so well out there today. Well, we came clear to New York to a new track, and you fear, okay, the hometown boys are going to have their advantage. But we find this track, a lot of the corners are similar to what the one we've run about 10 years on at home. It's the layout's different, but a lot of the corners are the same, so it's almost like it's halfway home. Oh, that's terrific. Well, <laughs> 
secret. Uh, just to get you off the date here on who the Emmys are, you people rip, have raced uh, in Europe, yeah. New Zealand? Uh, New Zealand, Australia, Hong Kong. How do you find the racing when you go, when you travel abroad? Well, it's taught us quite a... It, you stay in the same ball game and you kind of get bored with the same things, but you go try something else, you know, and you start seeing things totally different, totally new. They're, did, our motors were a lot faster at the time, but their chassis were better than ours, and, and now we've come around, you know, done full circle. We've designed our chassis up to, I think, we're better than them now in the last two years. That's terrific. Uh, do you see very many American-built chassis over there? Have they adopted our chassis yet? No, they have their FIA organization, and they have their homologation rules, and we'd have to export 50 of our frames to them, and I don't know if they would, you know, be wanting to buy 50 of ours not knowing the chassis. Well, that, that brings me to this question, then. Are you allowed to use your own frames when you are there racing? Well, when we go to Hong Kong, Australia, and New Zealand, we can, and it's, it's great. We go down there, and it's fun to see how our chassis handles to theirs. And going, oh, we got a front-end stick, and they're still washing out. New, the trick thing is the tires. When they start on new tires, they're about equal to us, but their tires wear out, the carts drop off, and our cart is pretty good on tires, and it hangs in there. Oh, well. Uh, a couple of years ago, Lake Speed was uh, fortunate enough to win the World Driving Championship, Karting Championship, and they, uh, you know, looking at, at the articles that I've read, and uh, I come to the conclusion that it was tires in that particular case that did the trick. Yeah, it was. He he was the fourth team driver, and they've had he kept hanging in there through all the races. He went through, I think, about nine qualifying heats and he ended up about third off pole which gave him the advantage and so in the end you know just before the main event they rushed out and gave him the trick tire and he said when he went out on lineups he couldn't believe how much better they stuck that's unbelievable uh you cannot imagine the level of competition that's here if you if you go up and down this pit area we've got 20-year veteran drivers out there on the track we got people that was around go-karting when it was first conceived out in california and uh, it's just a high, very ultra-high level of competition. Not so much uh, dollars-wise, although I'm not trying to kid anybody. It costs money to do this. Uh, but compared to other forms of motor racing, this has to be one of the least expensive, wouldn't you say? Oh, definitely. Do dollar per weight ratio is the cheapest form of racing, even though it does cost you. But the quality of driving, I think if they could take just about any go-karter and put him in, in a you know larger car, and he'd come out like he'd been you know three or four years experience in the vehicle. That brings us to this, too. Uh, we are seeing uh, a coming along of kart racers now into uh, the larger open wheel and bodied cars such as Lake Speed, Tia Fabi and these people. And they are showing that uh, they have the credentials to run with the big people, with the bigger cars. Yeah, right. It's a, it, they're, they can do it at a younger age. Like uh, Al Unser Jr. ran cars when he was 9, 10 years old. Michael Andretti did it. And uh, you've got the newer guys today and you're, you're getting half of the Formula One field all came from junior champion go-karters. drivers here today. Uh, you're on your home turf. Uh, how do you think you're going to stack up against these uh, incoming pros that are here today? Well, it's a long race. You know, we got three heats, 25 laps a heat. So, you won't know until the 75th lap. Okay. Let's step up just a little bit here and run out of course. Uh, normally, uh, you come out here on a Sunday afternoon, you find most of the local drivers. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, this is our local track. And today, and today you got drivers from California and Illinois and all over. Uh, how was the local turnout? Uh, do you have many local drivers that came out here today to test themselves against these pro drivers? Well, there wasn't as many locals here as what we thought there was going to be. Uh, I don't know how many cars they had, but they estimated about 80, and I don't think they got 80 cars. I see. We were talking to Terry Schreeder and uh, Kurt Burns and a couple of these guys, and they said that... Uh, Amick was the guy that was flying here in practice so far. Uh, has you found that to be true? Oh, definitely. He's, he's been the one to beat for about two years now. Oh, man. Well, listen, uh, Rod, we want to wish you the very best of luck. We hope he, we hope he can come up with just enough horsepower to catch this guy named uh, Amick, whoever he is. Well, we're going to need quite a bit more to catch him. Well, you know, the race is never over until the checkered flag falls. Right? All right, that's right. Okay, Rod, Wilson, thanks for talking with us. We wish you lots of luck. Thank you. 